Hello, everyone. Welcome to Practical GCP. In today's session, I'd like to talk about Cloud Data Store's key or index design. So first of all, I'll quickly talk about what is Cloud Data Store and why you might want to use it, and followed by the example use case of the Cloud Data Store. Then we'll start with a bad key or index design, and we'll explain why it doesn't scale or why it doesn't work. And I will move on to a good key or index design and why it does work a lot better compared to the other solution. So let's crack on. So Cloud Data Store is a highly scalable NoSQL database, or you can say it's a document database. So it's designed for highly concurrent read traffic. And the difference between a, you may have heard, a key value store and this particular document database is that not only it supports the primary index, which is typically called the key, it also supports secondary indexes. So the difference is the primary index or the key has to be unique, but that isn't a constraint for the secondary indexes. So let's set up some context. So the use case here is about using the postcode district to look up for data in a very highly concurrent environment. So that could be things attached to the postcode district can be the amount of population in an area uh, or any other aggregated data. So this is just a area, but for the solution to work, then the data we store has to include the postcode district for the entire country, obviously, right? So the, the lookup, is typically against one district. The traffic is highly concurrent. So let's look at the how this system, this kind of system might be designed and where does Cloud Data Store fit in. So here you have applications, right? So this could be a mobile app, could be a website, could be any kind of things. So you may have tens of millions of users using those apps. So in other words, the traffic coming in from those apps are highly concurrent, so loads of requests. So that can be from hundreds a second to tens or even hundred thousands of second. The next layer down is typically a API layer. So I've put down Cloud Run here, but you don't have to use Cloud Run. Anything that is capable of serving API would be sufficient. So there are two designs I put down here. On the left is the bad key design with Cloud Data Store for this use case. And on the right-hand side, it's a good design. So start with the bad design, describing why it doesn't work. In order to do the lookups, you need to have indexes. So because these postcode districts are unique, we can just use these districts codes as the, the key. Well, obviously, when you have the data, you have, let's say, SN1 with aggregated population and many other aggregated data points attached to this SN, SN1 document, right? Then you put it into a Cloud Data Store. The key in this particular case is just the postcode district, SN1. However, there is a problem with this. So as you can see, I've mentioned here, the problem in here is SN1, SN2, SN3, or all of the SN postcode district, they are lexicographically close. So that means, let me dive into a little bit on the, what lexicographically close means. So there's a term called the lexicographical order. And that in other words, is also called lexical order or dictionary order or you can just think it as alphabetical order, right? A to Z. So SN, all of the SN postcode, 
they are very close to each other, right, in this case. So why is that a bad thing when doing the key designs? So in order to explain this well, we need to look at a little bit of how distributed storage works in the distributed department. So this is a illustration of the data store storage backend. Obviously I call it illustration because I don't know exactly how it's designed and how it works, but in almost all distributed environment, you would need to have something like this, which is typically called sharding. So you could have separate physical disks, right? All the different partitions on the disk. So it has to be designed in this way in order for the traffic or the storage to escape. Assume shard A is attached to disk A and shard B is attached to disk B. And if you think S as the SN postcode district, right? That if all of your data, right? All of the S are actually stored on a single shard that is mapped behind the scenes into a single disk or a single partition of the disk, then this can only serve so much capacity, right? And this is called a hotspot. So when you hit a hotspot, this solution cannot scale because it's physically constrained, right? Into one single disk. And then that means when the traffic goes higher, what data store does is start, starts returning errors and therefore your application would not be able to scale. Right, let's go back. So in order to solve the problem, a good key design is to rather than storing just the data, right, S and one, the postcode districts as the keys, you would convert it by hashing the key and then pre-append that to the original data. And what that means is you could apply a SHA-2 hash to the data, followed by underscore and the original data. The same for SN2 and SN3 and so on. So what you would end up with instead is something like this. So SN1 would become this hash. So these are the first eight characters of the hexadecimal hash. Right. As you can see, they're all different and they're all random. So the whole point of the hash is that if you apply a hash to some value, some data, right? Even if the data has only been changed a little bit, as you can see here, it's changed from one to two, but then the hash would become something completely different. So in other words, it's random. So when it is random, Let's look back into this. Originally, if we just use S as the, as the key, then it would obviously hit a single shard, right? If we randomize the value, then it will evenly hit all of the different shards randomly. So that means you can scale horizontally to Almost, almost the infinite, right? So all you have to do is to add more disk, which is very straightforward. To use the hash and pre-append the hash to the original value is the Google recommended best practice in the key design. But you might be wondering, why can't you just use the hash? Why do you have to pre-append? Well, I don't actually know what the correct answer is, but I do have two assumptions. The first one is that if you pre-append the hash to the original value, then when looking at the data, you would know what the hash means, right? You would know what the original value is. So this is very convenient for debugging or just looking at the data when you need it. And the second reason what I think it might be is the hash collisions. As you can see, MD5 is 10 to the power of 29, and then you get the SHA-1 is 10 to the power of 45, then you get the SHA-2 
is 10 to the power of 60. So all the three, even for MD5, the collision, the chance of collision is extremely rare, but extremely rare is not impossible, right? So then if you pre-append the hash to the original value, then it becomes deterministic 100%, right? You're never gonna have a collision because your original value is always there. Okay. One last thing I would like to mention is this best practice page. So key design is important, but there's a lot more to just the key design. So this page covers everything pretty much you need to know to scale the read and the write. Yeah, you heard that right, because you also have to get the data into Cloud Data Store, right? How do you make sure that scales? There's a section down here about ramping up traffic, which you would like to read about. So this page, please bookmark it and read it through line by line. It is very important to understand. Okay, that's the end of the session. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Go, go, go out.